Five, from Matthew chapter 5, we're going to read 13 to 16. Okay, let's read. Yes. If the salt have lost its savour, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden on the foot of men. Verse 13. You are the salt of the earth. Can you look at, can you find a neighbor that looks prophetic? Just look at that neighbor. Ask your neighbor, are you prophetic? Do you think that neighbor is a prophetic neighbor? Because the neighbor is going to be declaring and releasing a word over here. So look at that neighbor well. Look. Assess that neighbor. If you don't like the way your neighbor is looking, please change. You are free. Now, are you okay? Tell me if you're okay. Are you okay with your neighbor? Okay. Oh, yeah. Look at that neighbor. Tell your neighbor, you, my neighbor. Oh, you are not okay. That's why you are sounding low. Say, you, my neighbor. You are the salt of the earth. Oh, yeah. Look at another neighbor and tell the neighbor the same thing. Your neighbor does not understand who they are. Tell your neighbor you are the salt of the earth. Or you find a third one and tell that neighbor you are the salt of the earth. Now look at your neighbor and say, my neighbor, I am not Jerry. Call your name, I am not Jerry. I am the salt of the earth. If you believe it, even if you don't know what I'm about to say, can you shout a loud amen? amen. All right, let's continue. But what good is salt? If it has lost its flavor, can you make it salty again? It will be thrown out and trampled on the foot as worthless. Please take your seat in the presence of God. I am super, super excited about this team, uh, mantle of distinction or mantle of relevance and distinction. I am excited about this topic because as much as, I don't know about you, but I am very much interested in it as much as you are interested. Because I believe that after today, even my own life will not be the same again. And I know that your life can never be the same again. I have come to church today with everything in me to receive everything I can receive from God. And I don't know about you. Because you see what? I am tired of where you are and I'm tired of where I am. Who is tired of where you are? Uh -huh. Look at your neighbor and tell him I'm tired. Tell your neighbor it's time to make movement. I don't know, you just came with a neighbor that woke up and is still tired. Tell your neighbor, I am tired of where I am and it's time to make movement. It's time to make what? Hallelujah. And this scripture blesses me so much. You know the scripture very well. And when Jesus was talking, he says, you are the salt of the earth. We know salt very, very well. Everybody is familiar with salt. Do you know I stumbled on this? It has nothing to do with what I'm about to say. But it's just something I learned. And I don't know if you already know it. But if you know it, fine. If you don't know it, at least you become like me. You now know it. I found out that salt comes from a Latin word. And it is um, sal, 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 S-A-L. Sal is the Latin word that salt comes from. And salt was once a valuable community, commodity. It was once a valuable commodity and used as a currency for trading. Did you know that? I never knew that salt was used for trading before. Did you know? Uh, okay, some of you knew. Who are those that did not know? Please, I hope they must be. Uh, hey, thank you. We're in the majority. So, salt was once used as, meaning that if you want to go and buy uh, bread, you will give them salt and collect bread. Can you imagine that? So, do you know that the word salary came from that that word salt. Yes, the word salary came from the word salt. Who knew that one? Okay. Uh -huh. Who knew? You did not know. Okay. Uh -huh. She did not know, but she did her hand. Okay. So only one person I think knew that. That the word uh, salary came from the word salt. Okay. It is just something I found that it's not part of our message today. Are you, are you excited that I told you something? No, no. Uh, okay, let's get to the heart of the matter. So verse 13 says, you are the salt of the earth. Now, the first thing that comes to my mind when I think about salt is flavor. Who agrees with me? The first thing that comes to my mind is flavor. Meaning that if you finish cooking, no matter how nice you finish cooking a food, if you have not put salt in that food, the taste does not come out. It is when you put that salt, that is when you say, hey, now, if you like, add all the curry in the, in the world, add all the uh, thyme, add all those things, uh, my, my nice nice seasoning until you put salt that is only when it begins to taste what nice that is when you begin to appreciate what you have cooked so salt we know it as a flavor it's used as a flavor and one word for the one meaning of the word flavor is compliment meaning that salt complements so when you put salt in a thing it does what it complements do you know why I'm excited with the word compliment compliment means and I'm going to dictionary meaning is to provide something 
felt to be lacking or needed. Something felt to be lacking or needed. So when you taste the food, you just say there's something missing. There's something lacking. And by the time you put salt, it's as if it has now done what? It has now provided that thing that was missing or lacking. God sent me to tell you today that he has created you as a salt. Meaning that wherever things are missing or whenever things are lacking, you are the one to bring that thing back. If you get into a place and something is missing, that is why God planted you there. Because it is in you that they will find, you will bring the solution to that thing that is missing. If something is lacking, you are the one to provide that thing that is lacking. Don't ever get to an environment and wonder, why am I the one here? Why am I in this type of place? No, every place you get to, there is something missing. In your business premise, in your career, in your city, there is something missing. And God says, I have created you as salt so that you can go and become what? You can go and provide uh, that thing that is missing. That is why I have called you. See, God, see, I need you to understand this scripture. It says, you are, meaning it's your identity. This is the way he has created you. So if you have not started playing that role, it means you have not come into full manifestation of who he has created you to be. For he has created you to go out. Today when you go out, start looking for things that are missing around you. When you go out, look for things that are lacking. And as soon as you show up, when you see those things, tell yourself, I have the solution. I am the salt. I will bring in my flavor. And once I show in and step in, things will begin to do what? Will begin to work. Because you know what? I have what? Arrived. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, I have arrived. Uh, oh, no, 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 you are not standing like you. Tell your neighbor, I have arrived. Uh, your relevance grows when you are able to find what is missing. That is when relevance grows. How can you become relevant if nothing is missing in your environment? The way you become relevant is when things are missing. It's when things are lacking. Then you show up and you bring solution. Then they say, this man, this woman is a relevant person. So that is how relevance grows. Uh, when you don't leave people the same way you met them, that is the way relevance grows. When you enter place and you speak to people and after you're done with them they feel better about themselves they feel more encouraged about their situation that is relevance look at your neighbor give your neighbor high tenor and tell your neighbor i grow in relevance i grow in relevance it grows when you have what your generation what your generation needs that is how relevance grows when you have what your generation needs hear me clearly your generation is looking for something your generation needs something Every man or woman you come in contact with each day, there is something lacking in their life. There is something missing in their life. And just one word from you can change the trajectory of events in their lives. One word, one action from you can turn things around. So whenever you go about, no matter how well put people look, just know that there is still something missing in this person's life. In every business you get into, no matter how beautiful their profits are, there is still something missing there and God has called me the salt uh, so that I can find it and so that I can prove a solution wherever you are raise your hand and say I receive uh, the mantle uh, of relevance the mantle of distinction can you shout aloud amen take your seat in the presence of God and another thing that comes to my mind when you think about salt is that salt is a preservative who agrees with me salt is a preservative do you know like Batosha? You can, I can remember my father in those days. I don't like pork. Who likes pork meat? Pork. Ah, you are many. Okay, me, I don't like pork. Who does not like? I think we are more. Okay, so I don't like pork. My father used to, I don't know if he still likes it, used to love pork. And he used to eat it with abacha. You know abacha? Abacha, that abacha that uh, they put in water. The water, oh, not the dry one. So he would bring it out. And he used to, they would dry the pork. And I used to wonder then, I was investing. The way they used to dry it, they would just cut it into slim, thin, thin parts. Then they would salt it and put under the sun. And the thing would dry, you know. And as long as, and I used to wonder, this thing doesn't spoil. You know why it won't spoil? Because the salt is that thing that will fight whatever micro organisms. So what salt does is that salt dries up the water so dehydrated. 
dehydrates it. So it loses its water and it begins to dry. Then you can imagine, I will not tell you the many story when they put their butter and put the pork and add pepper, fresh pepper and you see him enjoying the whole thing. I used to just wonder, I never tasted it, but I am just, well, I did not say it for you to think of food. I am saying it so that you just understand what salt does when it comes to preservation. And and the Lord sent me to tell somebody here, you know why it is a preservative? Preservatives are used to do what? To prevent decay. You use preservatives to prevent what? Decay. You use preservatives for another reason, in order to prolong the lifespan of a thing. That is why you use preservative. And God said I should tell you. You see why? Why you are receiving this mantle of relevance and distinction today? It's because nothing around you is permitted to spoil. You didn't hear me. Nothing around you is permitted to do what? Spoil. Ayakata, because you are that salt, when you step into the environment, even if something was about to spoil, Ayakata, you are salt. Look at your neighbor, tell him, I am salt. I am salt. Can you think of your family and there is something that wants to spoil? Look at that neighbor and say, I am salt. So as you step into your family, things cannot go wrong because salt has just stepped in. Things cannot decay. I don't care how bad they were before now, but because now you know who you are. As soon as you show up, uh, things that were spoiling will begin to walk. Uh, you don't understand. You don't understand what I'm saying. I see some of you, you keep querying, why am I in this family? Every time it's always me. Why is it me? Why am I in this family? Things are not working in this family. I wish somebody else was in this family. No, 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 no. Don't wish, don't wish, don't wish. You are, how will you understand how relevant you are? How will you know that a mantle of distinction has been placed in your life if everything is the same? Eh, eh, this must go wrong. This must spoil her so that you can see her that you are not ordinary because as he's trying to spoil her, you show up a yakata yata, rakata, even if it is tongues, by the time you say leko poto 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 pa, that thing will give way. I don't care the family challenge, whether they have said in your family, there is this uh, generational disease, uh, diabetes runs in your family. Uh, what are those things they say? Hypertension runs in your family. Arthritis runs in your family. I really don't care whether it happened to those before me, but because I am now in this family, it cannot happen again. Oh, Shadada, nothing can go wrong. Nothing can die in your hands. Rise up on your feet. Stretch out your two hands and say, because uh, I have received uh, a mantle uh, of relevance and distinction, nothing dies. Uh, I cannot hear your voice. Nothing dies around me. Uh, nothing spoils uh, around me. Uh, hear the word of the Lord, I pray for you. As your two hands are lifted, uh, nothing will die around you. Uh, your parents will not die. Uh, your siblings will not die. Uh, your children will not die. Uh, when I talk of death, uh, I am looking at death physically, spiritually, in every way. Nothing will die around you. Uh, nothing will spoil your hands. Uh, you see the work of your hands. Uh, it will not spoil. Uh, it will not reduce. Uh, it will not decline. Uh, it will not go down. Uh, let your amen make your reality. Let your amen make your reality. I cannot hear your amen. You can take your seat. You see why I am interested in preservation? You see why I'm interested? And if you read about Joseph, the Bible will tell us about Joseph. Did you know that in Joseph, in Joseph, Genesis chapter 39, if media can be magnanimous to show us, Genesis chapter 39, we are looking at it in New Living Translation, verse 2. You see something about Joseph. And the Bible will say, the Lord was with Joseph, so he succeeded in everything he did. And he served in the home of his Egyptian master. Continue. Did you see what happened? God was with him and he did what? He prospered. He succeeded in everything he did. Potiphar noticed this and realized the Lord was with Joseph, giving him success in everything he did. That is what relevance looks like. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is what relevance looks like because when the hand of God comes upon you, everything you begin to do begin to succeed. Uh, everything you begin to do is blessed and people around begin to notice and they don't just notice. See what Potiphar did by the next verse. The Bible says in the next verse, can you 
this please Potiphar. So he soon made Joseph his personal attendant. Why did he make Joseph? Why did he raise Joseph's position? Because of what? Because of relevance he saw Joseph bring on board. And he put him in charge of his entire household and everything he owned. I like the next verse. From the day Joseph was put in charge of his master's household and property, the Lord began to bless Potiphar's household for Joseph's sake. Did you hear? Because of Joseph. So that is why I know that as a salt and as a preservative, no matter how things were before you came in, because of your sake, not because of anything else, but because you showed up, I pray for business owners. May God give you ayatayada, men and women like that, that because of their sake, things begin to work in your business. Uh, I know you are already carrying relevance today as a business owner. I know you are also carrying the mantle of distinction, but you need workers that also carry what you carry, so that as you are bringing, they are not depleting, so that as you are bringing, they are not reducing. Uh, oh, let it tell you, I pray for your business. Uh, may God begin to give you employees. Uh, may God begin to give you workers. Ayakata, uh, carry relevance. Arakashana, that will multiply what you have. Uh, they will not reduce you. Uh, they will not bring you down. Uh, they will not make you bankrupt. Uh, let your aim at thunder. Let your aim at thunder. I am rushing, so I would have still talked about Isaac. Isaac is another person in the Bible that the Bible say in a land of dryness, where there was famine in the land, it was in that same land that Isaac sowed. It was in that same year that Isaac reaped what? A hundredfold. In the same place of dryness. Why am I staying on this matter? Because I really want you to understand that no matter how a place is, I live in a city and it swallows its inhabitants. Because you are in that city, it cannot swallow allow you. You don't understand. Because you are in that city, you will be that salt uh, that will make the city move from swallowing its inhabitants to doing what? Prospering its inhabitants. Uh, oh, yakata, da, da, da. If you believe you're the one, let your aim at thunder. Let your aim at thunder. Raise your hand. Say from today, from today, nothing uh, will die around me. Uh, if you believe it, thunder three loud, amen. Let me run. You can sit down. Another thing about salt. Uh, another thing about salt is that salt is used for different purposes. Who agrees with me? You can use salt for different things. Do you know that one salt, one product called salt, you can use salt for tanning. I think you know. You can use it for dyeing. You can use it for bleaching. You can use it for production of pottery. You can use it for production of chlorine. Salt can be used for different things. I can remember when I lived in the UK and I used to wonder why before maybe whenever they hear that a uh, winter snow wants to fall, do you know what they do? They take salt and they pour it on the road. Do you know why they pour salt on the road? They pour it on the road so that when the snow falls it will not freeze. Uh, if you look at chemistry, I cannot go into it because of time but it tells you that there is a freezing point and what have you, what have you. So the idea, even if snow falls when they want to scrape out snow they pour a lot of salt and it makes it easy because what happens? The iced snow, the snow that has formed into ice begins to do what? Thaw and melt and it begins to flow and touch over other areas. So salt is used for different things. It is one thing uh, but it serves different multiple uh, functions and uses. Uh. And God said, uh, in this season of your relevance, in this season of your distinction, I will not just make people know you as one kind of person. Hey, 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 hey. The season of them seeing you finish and predicting you is over. Today you will show up in this way. Tomorrow you show up in another way. Another day you show up in another way. And do you know why you are showing up in different ways? Do you know why? Because whatever it is they need per time, that is who you become by that time. You don't understand. Your generation needs you to be A. You become A in that situation. When you go to another environment, they need you to be B, you become B. Today I pray for you. As the Lord is mantling us with relevance and distinction, may it make you a rakata. May you become a too many things to different people. Too many things to different people. Uh. You will not be predictable. Oh, why do I think you don't understand what I'm saying? Why do I think you don't understand what I'm saying? You cannot be the same person. You cannot show up every day the same way. And Paul will say something. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 9, 20 to 22, I am made all things to all men that I by all means uh, save some. Uh. So everywhere you go to, oh, 
oh God forbid that your generation is looking for chocolate uh, and you give them pita cola at the time they want chocolate uh, when they now want pita cola you offer them chocolate do you see the difference uh, but when they want chocolate you have chocolate you give chocolate they want sweet you give sweet they want biscuit you give biscuit whatever it is how can you lose your relevance uh, whenever you are presented uh, with a matter you show up uh, with the solution per time I pray for somebody I pray for myself uh, today on this altar of fire whatever our generation needs us to be per time uh, we will become that person per time uh, receive multiple competences I uh, add you will not be made for one use uh, you will be made for several uses uh, several purposes uh, show up uh, when you show up uh, you will carry the answer when you show up uh, you will have the solution uh, your generation will not say uh, you are offering them what they used to need uh, you are offering them what they don't want uh, powers behind uh, making men irrelevant uh, as your amen will thunder I command it to break uh, break uh, break uh, break uh, break uh, break let your amen thunder uh, raise your two hands. Uh, I pray for you today. From today, you become a carrier of answers. You didn't hear me. You become a carrier of solutions. Uh, from today, where it matters and when it matters, may your usefulness be seen. Uh, may your usefulness be evident. Uh, I pray for you. Uh, a new you is emerging from this service. A new you is emerging from this service. Salt has remained useful over the years. Hear me. Over the years. In the ancient times, we knew about salt. Today, it is still useful. Tomorrow, even when we are long gone, I believe salt will still be useful. I believe that's why God used salt uh, when he says you are the salt of the earth because he understands uh, that your usefulness uh, is not seasonal. It's not time driven. Uh, your useful usefulness uh, outlasts seasons and times. Uh, God is saying that in this service, uh, what he is doing when he says he's making you a person of relevance and distinction is that he is doing what? Uh, he's making you useful through the times and season. Uh, you remain fresh. Uh, uh, yeah, that you don't understand. Your freshness does not go down. Do you know this scripture Psalms? Uh, oh, I am out of time. Psalms 92 and I will end here. Psalms 92 verse 12 to 14. The Bible says the righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. Do you know why the righteous is flourishing like a palm tree? Do you know why the palm? The other day, Barista Nalong was talking to me about the business they are doing with palm fruit. Do you know that every part of the palm is useful? Every part, every 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 part. Meaning that when you get the palm, you see that uh, oil part is useful to produce oil. You see that chaff when you finish squeezing oil, you throw. It is useful. People go to buy it. I cannot start telling you why they buy it. Now that aki, the aki inside the palm that you chew. You know that oil. They use it to make oil. Yes, they use it to make oil. Now the chaff of the uh, aki is still useful as well. Every part of the palm fruit is useful, and that is why there is no mistake in the Bible where he says that the righteous is flourishing like what? The palm tree. Meaning that every part of you must be useful. There is value in every area of your life. There can never be a part of you that they will not see value. They will not see value show up. Do you understand what I'm saying? So the Bible says he shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of I like verse 14. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flourishing. It is assume that when you begin to grow old you should begin to do what? Go down, decline. But even in old age, you are producing fruit. Uh, you are still fresh. Uh, you are evergreen. Uh, I pray for somebody today on this altar of fire. Hey! Shakapa! Hey! Yada, yada. You will remain evergreen. Uh, you will remain fat and flourishing. Uh, you will keep blossoming. Uh, hey! Yada, yada. They will never say you had a better yesterday. Oh. They will never say your yesterday was better. They will never say your business did well before. But right now it's not doing well. Whether you are alive uh, or when you are gone, uh, your legacy will be preserved. Uh, your legacy will be preserved. Uh. Oh, ne, 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 ne. Take the oil again. Place the oil on your forehead. It is the oil of freshness. It is the oil of newness. As you put the oil on your head, say, I will remain fresh. I will remain new, evergreen. I am a
God. Year in, year out. The path of a good man is like a shining light. He shines brighter and brighter. There is no going down. There is no going down. Put the oil in your forehead. If you have made a prayer, turn that seven loud. Amen.